All right, peace. So uh, my name is Adisa Benjoko. I teach Brazilian Jiu Jitsu at Half Gracie Santa Clara and at the LinkedIn headquarters. I've been doing it almost half my life. I'm 54. I started when I was like 27. Um, so I'm going to give a brief overview about Jiu Jitsu. You know, I'm a black belt. I've been training for a long time. Uh, happy to be doing it. Um, grappling is a, it's an old sport. Right. This is uh, not far from the pyramids. Right. Wall of Beni Hassan. Right. 2400 B.C. Grappling. If you look at these moves, you'll see a lot of stuff that you find in Greco-Roman. You'll find a lot of the same stuff that you'll find uh, in Jiu Jitsu. Right. Is here. You know, grappling is a human language that that men speak. And so it's important that you learn to speak this language. Lucky for all of you, even though you can't appreciate it right now and it's OK, like. This is the best time ever to learn martial arts that's ever existed. Not just because of the spectrum of the arts, but your access to them has never been higher. So there's no excuse for anyone in this room to not know how to defend themselves. If you don't know how to defend yourself, that is a choice that you made. And whatever happens, happens. Right? And this doesn't have to be like a, oh, I'm getting ready to train for war and da da da. No, just know how to defend yourself as a human being. Know how to protect the elderly. Know how to protect uh, a youngster from a bully. Relax. All right, so cliff notes of my life. I started at Half Gracie Mountain View 1997. Um, I did it because uh, I just got married and my now ex wife didn't want a gun in the house. And I was like, oh, well, I guess I, guess I got to be the gun. So, you know, jujitsu was new. Uh, I started going there. And the first day that I went there, just because, you know, I wasn't a very physical human. So um, I didn't really know what to expect. Anyway, I came out of there real sore. It wasn't that they were beating me down or anything. It's just I wasn't physical, you know, so I didn't, I didn't know what to expect. And I remember I was so sore, I would wake up in my sleep from moving. And I remember looking at the ceiling being like, man, this might not be the hobby for you, homie. You're in a lot of pain right now. And I was like, maybe it's time to call it, you know? Hey, salam, brother. And I said, you know what? Go back. Just go back. And if it hurts this much again, don't do it. But if it hurts a little less, you stay. And now we're here. Right? Um, I got my black belt from Alan Gumby Marcus, a hero's martial arts. He's one of uh, Half's top students, and we started together. I've also recently done a movie called Rhythm of the Dragon that's at the Chinese Historical Society in uh, San Francisco. If you don't know who Bruce Lee is, most of the people you know that do martial arts do it in part because of Bruce Lee's huge influence. Don't sleep on Bruce Lee. Um, I just got back. Uh, I've been spending the last two or three years uh, going back and forth to the UK. So I've been touring across the United Kingdom, uh, doing jujitsu seminars, meeting with different people, and it's been profound. But before that, I was just a nerd. Look at this nerd, right? That was it, right? This is how we all start, just trying to figure it out getting socked up in the hallway, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and you don't really know how to defend yourself. I didn't have a big family, so it wasn't like I had cousins or brothers that could look out for me. And uh, I didn't have any self-defense training. So the, the main thing I want you to know is like, I'm not made out of magic. Anything you see me do, I practice doing, period. And if you think of anything that you're not doing well in your life, weigh it against how much you're practicing that thing. And you'll find out that all you need is more practice. Um, Habib and Islam, they changed the game, right? We all love the UFC. We like fighting, but these dudes changed the game. Not just because of their technical prowess. They changed it because of their character. They changed it because of who, who they fought for, whose honor they sought. They weren't looking for Reebok sponsorships. They weren't looking to do anything but glorify the God they love and the prophet they love and the path that they walk in the cage. Um, this is huge, right? And what is it? This is just a reminder, right? The explosion of, of Islam in the grappling arts and in the martial arts world is just a reminder that we've been doing this. I know a lot of you guys probably heard about Joe Rogan and Huberman Lab, and you see him talking about fasting and the importance of that. Been doing that. Talk about deliberately enduring hardship. Like I, I study Stoic philosophy, right? And they have this thing called voluntary hardship. 
Muslims do voluntary hardship every Ramadan. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We, 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 we deprive ourselves to pay more attention, to, to increase our gratitude. So all these things now that the West, I just saw a thing for, a, for a, 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 an alcohol-free bar. That's the new thing. I was like, for real? Sounds like Islam. <laughs> we, we've been doing that. <laughs> Y'all just hanging out, having drinks with no alcohol in it. Innovative. Um, and so, but this is what happens in an America that's out of touch uh, with itself and having a hard time to acknowledge culturally what others have already been doing, right? It's only important when they do it. So fasting's important now because they understand the benefits. Staying away from alcohol is important now because they understand the benefits. We always knew. Right? So why do you learn jujitsu? You learn because you need to take time to learn how to defend yourself or you will lose to those who train. It's a very simple equation. All right, so yes, prophetic grappling. You need this book, Nisar Sheikh. Get this book. Like, I'm telling you to pull your phones out now and get it or take a picture of this screen and tell your parents to get it for you as soon as possible, right? This book is amazing because it breaks down the life of the prophet peace be upon him as a grappler but you also learn the larger role that masjids used to play they weren't just places of prayer they were places for training they were places for uh business they were places for cultural interaction right and i think that you know i'm so honored to be here today because so many masjids are afraid to do exactly what's happening here i'm so grateful because I can't tell you how many ghost town masjids I've been walking through for the last half of my life. And it's like, all we have to do is embrace the prophetic sports to help the young people want to be around the elders and one another and everything will start to take care of itself. But as long as we push things away and, and, and we don't take time to really step into the sunnah of grappling, we're gonna have little different problems in our community. Right, so this is me and Grandmaster Helio Gracie and his son Horian Gracie. The guy you see uh, on the other side of Helio, he created the Ultimate Fighting Championship. He's the reason uh, Habib and Islam even had a place to express themselves, right? And so uh, they came from Brazil, they brought this art through the UFC, and it exploded and reignited the grappling, uh, the grappling craze that's happening now. That's me and Hoist Gracie sparring about 30 seconds before he triangle choked me really hard. Um, <laughs> it's hilarious, but I was like, oh, I, I passed Hoist Gracie's guard. I, I, must be, I must be a factor. I was not a factor. Um, I got took out a few seconds after that flash went off. And, um, you know, but it was fun and it was amazing. And, and Hoist Gracie, for those that don't know, he's the first champion of the UFC and he took Shahada about two weeks ago, All right? So I want you to think about that, the pioneer of MMA in North America now has the same Islam, has the same uh, faith as one of the greatest fighters to ever be in it, right? Talking about Habib and Islam, it's, it's an unbelievable circle, right? And so people have been calling me, they go like, why do you think, why do you think Hoist came to Islam? Why do you think Hoist came to Islam? The truth is, I don't know, but I can tell you that just doing what the Prophet did probably made it easier for her to, un for, easier for him to understand Islam right, as he came to it, right? And the wisdom that comes from grappling is, 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 is something that it's very quiet. It's a quiet wisdom, right? When you see real jujitsu champs, they're very quiet. They're not talkative, they're not chatty, they're, not, they're rarely braggadocious in the way that they carry themselves. And that's because a lot of the, the blessings that you get of gratitude and courage and wisdom intemperance it comes quietly so this was a talk uh that i did in uh in liverpool it's unbelievable um you know how the muslims overseas in the uk have taken on uh grappling you know what i'm saying they're very serious about it and um i want to talk to you about this idea of being anti-fragile if you leave with anything i say today leave with this leave with this right what does it mean to be anti-fragile? It comes from this guy named Nassim Taleb, who's like an economist and whatnot. But listen to this idea. So on one side, in most of the world, you have things that are fragile, like this box. You know, it withers in the sun and the water, it falls, and it will always be fragile. And then you have this brick, 
right? No matter what happens to that brick, if it gets ran over, if it rains on it, it's always going to be a brick, okay? And it's going to stay in its nature. But the human being is anti-fragile. So what this means is, um, Abdurrahman, if I, if I ask you to carry a 50 kettlebell for the rest of the day, right, how would your arm feel at the end of the day? The end of today, one day of carrying 50 pounds everywhere you go. Fairly sore, you know what I'm saying? Fairly sore, right? But how would that same arm feel if you did it for three months? How would your arm be after three months? Probably be fine. It would be fine, right? Why? Because your body is anti-fragile. The muscles, the tendons, everything would adapt to that 50 pounds. So what hurts on the first day, you don't even feel it three, four months later, right? Because your body adapts. Your body is anti-fragile. The mind is anti-fragile. And that's how you can take someone like Malcolm X, who was actually a dope dealer, actually a gangster, actually robbing people, actually going into people's homes and taking stuff. He goes to jail. You lock him up with books. He comes out debating people at Oxford and winning. He comes out a leader. He comes out changing his entire community, changing the world. And I, I don't even know if I'd be here if it wasn't for Malcolm X and what his autobiography did for my understanding of the world. Okay? Your mind is anti-fragile. So what I'm trying to get you to understand is don't run away from stress and pressure because that's how you grow. And learning jujitsu, learning wrestling, Exposing yourself to that adversity and that toughness is how you move forward, okay? Um, you were born to adapt. Look at this right here. Talking about these proteins in the brain that uh, doing sports like jiu-jitsu help grow. Mind plasticity. Everybody's talking about neuroplasticity, right? And here you see that jiu-jitsu and wrestling will give you neuroplasticity. Right? The wisdom of Rumi, your precious hidden diamond sunken in mud. We all are, right? The ignorance of this world, the darkness of this world, right? And we have to find light within and we have to find our connection through a law, to a law on our own time, right? And then you get champs like Terere. You got to fight for that. That stuff is hard. It is not easy, but it is always worth it. And I'm not even talking about gold medals. I'm not even talking about championships. I'm not even talking about competing. I'm talking about just finding out who you are through physical activity, right? And now let's talk about the, the value of reviving a forgotten sunnah. So many of us have left grappling. So many of us have walked away from all of the Futua sports. You talk to these youngsters about archery, they don't know nothing. You talk to them, right? But the older, a lot of the older men don't either, right? So if we're going to like be critical of the youth, we have to think about of the leadership and what examples were we giving these young men and these young women today, right? Um, Seneca, the Stoic philosophy, said a gem cannot be polished without friction nor a man perfected without trials. This is, this is in Liverpool. This is Mario Sukata, the guy in the middle uh, from the Carlson Gracie team. He runs everything down there. And what was hilarious is I was so excited because I had done the, the, the first classes at Zaytuna with chess and jiu-jitsu. I couldn't wait to get to the UK and share with them this idea of what we should be doing with grappling. And everything they had was better than everything we have. Everything they had was better than everything we have. Facilities bigger, students bustling, all ages. What? Then I went to another region. Okay, maybe it'll be different. Better again. What? At Mustafa Mount. Then, okay, maybe I'll go to this other spot. Better again. We're behind. We're late. They're doing it. And there's no excuse that the parents and the uncles and the aunties who got money all in this valley? Are you kidding me? No excuse. No excuse. Right? I'm happy that they're doing better than us so I can learn. But there's no excuse. We should be ahead. Right? This is the Abu Dhabi Combat Club, ADCC. Look at it. European and Middle East and African Championship. How many people knew this was happening? None of y'all. That's my point. I knew the answer before I asked it. And so the thing is, is that I'm trying to get you to figure out how is all this going on in the world and you don't know. If you don't feel some kind of weirdness about that, that's a problem. 
You should want to be in line with the other young people in your Ummah. You should know about Sheikh Tanun and how he's been doing this since you competed in Abu Dhabi, didn't you? Didn't you compete once? Yeah. What year was that? 96. Right? And people often, they ask me, oh, should women do jiu-jitsu? What do you think about women in jiu-jitsu? Yeah, the answer is yes. For two main reasons. One, and the main one is, come on, let's be honest. All the ox ain't ox up in here. Let's be honest. All the uncles ain't uncling. All right? And when they not, somebody needs to regulate. And everybody wants to, you going to regulate? You, you going to regulate? Nah, you going to regulate because you've been training. We got to have higher standards for the men in this community when we see abusers. Emotional, spiritual, physical, we not having it. And we need to know, the sisters need to know that when you, you need to know when you're not around her, she knows how to handle herself, period. All right? You see the sisters at Zaytuna right there doing the chess and jiu-jitsu program, right? And even though a lot of people don't talk about it, the coldest person who had a double leg at Zaytuna was a woman. The coldest person with a double leg was a woman. All right? So don't act like they can't fight or shouldn't fight or shouldn't know how to defend themselves. They absolutely need to know how to defend themselves. Don't be illusory about that. And what's it say in the Quran that the men are the guardians of women? But most of the men don't even know how to defend themselves. How, who are you going to guard? You can't jog two blocks. You gonna guard something? I can't hear that. Al Ghazali, right? Look at this quote. Declare your jihad on 13 enemies you cannot see. Egoism, arrogance, conceit, selfishness, greed, lust, intolerance, anger, lying, cheating, gossiping, and slandering. If you can master and destroy. Notice, he didn't just say master. He said master and destroy them. Then you'll be able to fight the enemy you can't see. Jiu-jitsu ultimately is about knowledge of self. Jiu-jitsu ultimately is about knowledge of self and your relationship with yourself and your understanding of the beautiful words of the prophet, peace be upon him. All right? So now I'll put this mic down and we're going to work on some jiu-jitsu. A few quick things. One, if someone taps out or says the word tap, let go. Let go. It doesn't matter if you get, oh, I, don't, I wasn't really doing it that hard. Let go. We are training. This isn't a fight club. Let's relax. Um, so what I'm asking people to do is try rolling with Rumi on the mat and in your mind. Let jujitsu not just be uh, a physical exercise. Let it be a spiritual exercise, right? And then step into your Islam and see how you can elevate your understanding of Allah and the Prophet, peace be upon him, through your training sessions, through the friendships you have, okay? Uh, follow your boy on IG and TikTok. You know that drill. There's the website. I'm also, there's a thing called the Everyday Stoic. It just dropped on YouTube. Check me out there, right? And then Abdullah Dutton, the new Nomos podcast. All y'all should be watching that anyway. Um, and I'm super grateful to everybody at the Walnut Creek Islamic Center, San Ramon Valley Islamic Center, MCC East Bay here. All right? And thank you. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. I appreciate you. Um, these are so many of the people who've made jujitsu. uh in the Bay Area and around the world for me possible. So I want to thank all of them. And now let's uh, put this mic down and we'll get this popping today. Okay. Thank you for listening and I hope this helps. Peace. A huge part, first of all, I want to thank you for coming, trusting yourself. Trust in MCC, coming out and being vulnerable to learn this. You don't, look, I know only some of you will choose to stay with this. That's okay, right? That's okay. What you needed to do was get a sense of what you are capable of doing. Everything I'm showing you, and I mean everything that I'm showing you, one, I did not know at all. And two, I was horrible at for many years. So a big part of jujitsu is learning to be patient. When we talk about, you know, when you read in the Quran and Hadith about the value of patience, about the value of courage, wisdom, right? Balance, temperance, right? Justice, right? You learn who you are in all of those spaces when you roll. 
You learn who you are in those spaces when you roll. Sometimes you're gonna be tired. Sometimes you're gonna be scared. Sometimes you're gonna be angry. Sometimes that anger is gonna go too much. Sometimes fear will make you hesitate. And you can take these things into other parts of your life, in business, in school, in your personal relationships, and you can have a whole different level of clarity. A whole different level of clarity, right? So I hope that you stay with grappling. And when I say that I hope that you stay with grappling, I don't mean that I hope you go on to fight in Abu Dhabi or be the next Habib or any of that. I just mean that you stay with it so that you know yourself, you have a sense of knowing the Prophet, peace be upon him, a little bit better, and you have a sense of knowing your potential. Because we live in a time where because of the phones and so many other things that's going on in, in society that we really look, we always feel like everybody else is doing better. They have something we don't have. They're going somewhere we're not able to go, et cetera, et cetera. But through jujitsu and through the sunnah, you can find the peace that you actually need. Right? But you can't do it alone. You need other people to practice with. You need other people to give you pressure. You need other people to have ideas you don't have. And that's how we grow. So I want to thank you for trusting yourself. Thank you for trusting me, for sharing this time, sharing this space. It doesn't feel like a historic day. This is a very historic day. You are a part of a very historic day. And again, somebody in this crowd or maybe someone in your family because you'll tell them about what you did today will go on to be great because of what you chose to do today and for that i'm very grateful assalamu alaikum all right yeah yeah so so right i'm showing you escapes why because like I could show you some old crazy arm locks and choke holes, slam stuff, but one, we don't have any mats, right? So that's no good. So slams are out, right? Um, the other thing is, like, I could show you an armbar escape, but you don't know an armbar, right? And so most people won't try to armbar you, but they will try to get them out and give you a few to the jaw, right? So now you already got that escape. And the other thing they're going to do is they'll probably put you in a headlock and try to give you a few to the jaw. So I'm dealing with positions that are grappling positions, but also striking, you know what I'm saying? They favor striking, right? So before I show the headlock escape, I'm going to show you the headlock. Please pay attention to it, because if you don't do the headlock right, the escape nature, you know what I'm saying? It changes. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sit next to Ali so that my hip is next to his hip. Hip next to the hip. Cool. Now, my right arm is going to go under his head. My left hand is, look, I'm going to keep his wrist kind of in my armpit, and I'm going to have this C cuffing hand here. My knee is going to be under his shoulder, and I'm grabbing my leg. Now, on the street, I wouldn't be like this because I'm talking to you, right? But he could punch me straight in the face, right? Boop, and then it's like, world star, and it's all bad. So I'm going to be here. I'm going to put my temple on the outside of his temple. And now, he's just going to make me mad with that. He ain't going to win. All right? He's just going to make me mad. Now, if I wanted to finish the fight, don't do this move. If I want to finish the fight, I can just trace up his hand. You see how his arm is here? I stick my leg out. Watch this. All right. One more time, one more time. I'm just showing you how fights can end, guys. I'm not really... You know what I'm Right, just my ankle on his wrist. Ooh, what if I stomp on that thing? But this is this is this is why this is why there's mercy in grappling, right? Because what happens to him becomes my choice now. This not this may not be a fight. This might be the drunk uncle. We've all got one, right? This may be the uncle who's tripping. Be like, hey, uncle, we gotta come on, bro. Relax, man. You know what I'm saying? We don't want to get some swarm on. You know what I'm saying? You tripping out, right? So you may just want to contain somebody. It may not be, you know what I'm saying? We have this idea, it's going to the death in the alleyway. It just could be containing a person who's not well, right? Someone that you care about or a stranger. So hip to hip, under the head, C-clamp, right? I'm grabbing my own hamstrings behind me, okay? So now let's look at how do we get out of that. And remember, remember, we're, 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 we're back. the main problem here, right, in a street fight is how many people know this? Almost nobody. They do know this, though. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I just want to win, bro. That's it. Right? So this is my problem. I've got a guy who's pinned me on my back. 
with the potential to punch me in the face repeatedly, and I got to get out of here. So let's look at that. So, as discussed again, right, there's a logic leverage and timing here. This is not cool. The main problem is I'm stuck on my back. I have this concept I call facing your fears. I realized early in being here that if I want to get out, I can't turn away. If he squeezes and I try to turn away from the side he's on, I start sounding like SpongeBob on the beach. Right? This is not cool. Right? In order for me to get out, I've got to face this way. But he's pinning me. Right? My hips are on the mat. My back's to the floor. Okay. So i got to turn my legs this way. It's called a rainbow move. It comes from judo. You come here. Right? Like capital L. And I'm going to bring both of my legs this way like a rainbow. Okay? And I'm going to face him. But i got to yank this arm to me so it hits the mat. Right? I need to get my arm back. Okay? So I, I run my legs this way. I start to yank my arm when my legs get here. Now I have my arm back. Cool. Right? But he can still bomb if he felt like it until I come here. Because now I'm on my side. Okay? At this point, dudes are so happy that they have a headlock that they super squeeze. Because like, but I still got him. You know what I'm saying? So from here, I get back to my toes. And I'm going to bridge this way and turn to my forehand. Get to my knees. Now watch. I pull my arm out. I get behind here. Right? Let's look at that again. Right? I'm stuck on my back. Right? He's got it right. I need to get on my side. I need to face my fears. Whatever side he is on, that's how I got to go. That's it. I can't run away. I'm um, SpongeBob. It's no good. I'm here. Rainbow, yank the arm. Right? Use this hand a little bit to help you stop the punches. They commit to this squeeze. Now you can put your feet this way and be on your back safely because you're halfway out already. Okay? I'm going to bridge up forward and turn to my forehead. Boom. Come out back. I use here. Just Put my hand on the shoulder, fall back, right? And it starts getting nasty, right? Okay, let's play this slow, right? Let yourself be in each section so you're not just kind of trying to burst out, right? You need to know that you understand the mechanics of the escape. Does anybody have a question about this escape before we start? Okay, same partners. One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>